Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on the Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game Supernatural, written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know it as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, it's just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. Alright. Um, this is step one. And this is the code that we got for step one. Now, uh, I'm looking at this. Uh, inside the uh, C64 Studio integrated development environment written by Georg himself. He's even written the assembler himself, which is uh, the syntax he took from the Acme cross assembler. So if you're wondering what kind of assembler do I need to, to assemble this, um, it's the Acme one. Or you can just go to Georg's uh, site and download uh, this IDE from his site. That's probably the best thing to do. So during the whole show here, we're going to use this. Uh, uh, sorry, the the code is going to be in jmain.asm. It's just a name. Uh, I'm I'm publishing this code on uh, on GitHub as well. Links will be in the description. Uh, and the outcome of whatever we do is going to be in J main PR, uh, PRG. I don't know what the J stands for. It's just something he chose. I don't know. Now, what I think is funny is that Georg is sort of doubting whether he should use labels or not. You know, it's uh, but this program, I mean, this is all it is. It's very short, but it does tell me you know it, it it looks simple but it's not you know there's a couple of very important choices that he's made um let's start you know just a regular start uh, basic startup things that's uh, no uh, no biggie uh he initializes the sprite registers basically he makes sure that no sprites are visible uh which is basically a cleanup action it doesn't really do anything um then we start telling uh, you know we start talking to the vic chip we start uh explaining to the vic chip where we want our character set located the vic chip sees only 16k at once and you can select within that 16k where your 2k of character set code is going to be so he chooses a location here now it's not so important which, uh, uh, you know, which location he picks, um, but we'll see that. We'll, we'll, I'm interested in knowing why he picks this. I mean, he's, he obviously has some sort of memory model in mind, but he starts with this. You know, he starts us off with this. <laughs> and interesting. Then he also chooses uh, the Vic Bank. Um, and this is actually, you can, you can tell, uh, the Vic, which 16 K you, uh, wanted to look at. And he chooses the last bank, you know, the last air. So that's, uh, number three, or is it number one? You, you turn it around, I believe. I mean, it's, it's, it's way back in memory. I, I have a little picture. Uh, let's have a. Let's have a look see here. No, let's not have that look see. I have a picture. Let's take this one. Can we see that? Yeah, we can see that. This is the memory from location zero all the way up to uh, location 64K. Yeah, now let's forget the cart ROM. If you insert a cart, this is this RAM and ROM is overlaid by cart ROM, but that's not important. We have the zero page and the and some RAM here. We have some RAM here, and then we have the basic ROM. Uh, maybe I should get another picture, which will help us better. This one, this this picture isn't really as good. 
because it sort of fools us into thinking that these chunks right here are all the same size, but they're not. So maybe this is not the best one to, to see. I, I, I do know that we are going to have the Vic look at the last 16K right here. 16K. Where is it here? So uh, the, anyway, the, the last area. The kernel ROM is there, the character generator ROM, which we're going to copy somewhere else anyway, and the basic ROM, which you're going to swap out. So our, our VIC chip is going to be located somewhere in the back here. That's good to know. Huh? Now let's have a short look at the program. Um, uh, there's a game loop here. The game loop starts here, and it basically sets the border flashing by increasing the color. It says ink screen character. Now that's this number. So the first, um, the, the the character in the in the, in the top left is changed. And then we do a wait frame call, which is this this little thing here, and then we go jump back to the game. So this is basically an endless loop, but we wait here. Now what happens? What do you, what's he say? Wait for the raster to reach line F8, which is at the bottom of the screen. This is keeping our timing stable. Are we there already? If so, wait for the next full screen. Prevents missed timings if called too fast. This is an important thing. If this stays the same in the whole game, then... Um, so, l let's have l let's just see what happens. In every loop of the game, we check where the raster line is. That's DO12. See what I mean? I know that DO12 is the current raster line, but why has he used a hexadecimal notation here? Why hasn't he used the decimal notation or label? It's okay. He'll, he'll come around and, and choose a method, I'm sure. Now we look for the F... Is it already F8? If it is... Then we go to wait frame. If it isn't, in, in, in most of the cases, it won't be. So we go we go on to wait step two. And then we look again. And we compare to the same line again. If it isn't, then go to wait step. This loop, I mean, this this loop will have us busy waiting. It does exactly what he says here. If, you know, we're, we're drawing the screen, we're going down, we're going down, and only if, if we if we are at uh, uh, line F8, it waits, basically. Suppose the raster interrupt happened at the start of line F8. As long as we're on F8... It's going to jump to wait frame. And then when the VIC chip starts drawing line F9, it jumps out. It starts waiting again until we are at F8. So basically what we make sure of is that we are as close to the start of line F8 as we can. But that may mean that we wait an entire frame of doing nothing. We're wasting time. And, you know, when we're there, we jump out and the rest of the game loop. So in, the, in this game loop, we're going to be updating the player and the, and the enemy objects. We're going to do all that, but we're going to be busy waiting. In the worst case, we're going to be busy waiting an entire frame uh, before we get to go on. Now, as I've understood it, um, you know, uh, time is at a premium. You know, we, we have very little time to do our stuff. And here we just... We've just thrown away a, an entire frame, so either something is going to happen in this, you know, in this wait frame loop, uh, or uh, the problem isn't so big and we can waste entire frames. You know, <laughs> that's uh, at least we know we have some time in our hands. I would, I would think of a less wasteful method here, but hey, that's. Um, that's step one. That's all of step one. Let's see what happens if we uh, we run this. We can build it. We can 
you can build and run it. Let's see if I've set everything right. And that's what it does. You can see actually this line F8. See that? And the fact that um, you can actually see this line is that because we're waiting a little bit around this line and the, the border color is going to be a little bit different here than it is here. And you can see that the emulator actually has a little slowdown here. I'll, I'll stop it then. Yeah. So that's it. That's it for step one. It seems simple. We already have questions. So I, I wonder uh, I wonder what step two is going to be like. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment uh, if you have questions uh, or if you think uh, uh, other things. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look forward to whatever you have to say. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.